Okay, so welcome to the GV80. This is what your wheel is going to look like. There's actually quite a few buttons on it. This is the voice commands right up top here. This is your phone call to answer and reject the calls. Your volume, you can scroll up and down. If you press this button inwards, it's actually going to mute whatever uh, music you're listening to. You also have the mode button. You can customize this to cycle you between AM, FM, Sirius, uh, Bluetooth, whatever other media sources you have, you can add or take things off of there. So for instance, if you never listen to AM radio, you can take that off in the setting, which we're gonna cover a little bit later. You also have your custom button right here. Now, there's actually two custom buttons. I'll touch on the second one later. I'll just show it to you very briefly. It's right over here, okay? So this is the custom button that Typically what I like to set this one for is the passenger talk, especially if you have people on the back seat, you can just press this button and it activates um, the microphones up front and it projects your, projects your volume through the remainder of the car and through the speakers and all that. So it makes it a little bit easier to talk to passenger in the back instead of turning around and yelling and potentially getting in a less than fun situation. Now, on the top right here, this is your menu button. Okay, so if you look at your dash, the menu button again, the top one, when you press that, it takes you to the next screen. I'm gonna zoom in. See, it shows you your compass. Now, when you actually have your GPS set and you have a certain address, instead of showing you the compass, it'll actually show you your next turn. So it might have an arrow going straight and then to the right and it'll say 1.5 beneath it. And that's basically telling you in a mile and a half, you're gonna take a right turn. So I'm gonna press the menu button again, right over here, the top one. And that brings us to this screen. Now I like to keep this one on the tire pressure. You actually have to be in motion in order to see what your tire pressure is. And then this little scroll wheel lets you go through the different options over here. So if we scroll down, it says engine temperature, you can add other features to here. Then you have your fuel economy. It's basically how many miles per gallon you're doing. Scroll down again. This is basically your trip A. Scroll down and it's your trip B. If you ever do wanna reset any of those, this scroll wheel button, you can always just press it inwards and it resets. Then you have your attention level. The car is actually very good at detecting if you're driving irregularly, if you've been driving for a really long time and you might need a break. So the car will actually alert you for all of that. And then the next one is the tire pressure. That's typically what I recommend keeping it on. That way you know if your tires are ever low or a little overinflated. So I'm gonna press the menu button again and take us to the screen that I believe everyone should be on. Now, the reason is we use the adaptive cruise control quite a bit with this vehicle. Now, with the adaptive cruise control, what you're gonna do, when you get up to speed, you're actually gonna click this mode button right here on the right, okay? And it's gonna set your speed Right over here, you're gonna see your speed that you're currently set for. Now, if you're on the highway, you're using the GPS, it'll automatically set it to the speed limit. So that's a pretty cool feature that the car has. Now, once you set your speed and you're using the cruise control, in this lane in front of you, you're actually gonna see another vehicle. It's actually gonna look kind of like a shadow of a vehicle. Uh, it's gonna be gray and it's gonna be right in front of you. Now, as soon as you see that secondary vehicle in front of you, right in here, you know that the car is registering the person in front of you and will actually slow down and come to a full stop for you. Now, it's very important to always make sure that you see that secondary vehicle in front of you. I don't have it in front of me now. Um, I'm not gonna be driving around and filming a video that's very unsafe, but for all intents and purposes, you will see a secondary vehicle in front of you. If you do not, you are responsible for braking because let's say you're going, I don't know, 60 miles an hour, and there's somebody stopped at a red light about a half mile ahead of you and the car is not registering them yet. By the time the car reads them and slams on the brakes, you're still gonna slide forward, I don't know, 120, 180, 200 feet, whatever it may be, and you're gonna be parked inside their trunk. So that's not a very fun situation to be in. That's why I always recommend keep this screen on, especially when you're using the adaptive cruise control and make sure you see a secondary vehicle in front of you right here before you let the car slow down for you. Now, if you wanna adjust the car distance between yourself and the person in front of you, you can go from four to three, two, and down to one. If you click the same button again, it'll take you back up to four. And that button is right here. So you have to be on cruise 
and then you can adjust the car distance lengths right here and you'll see little blue squares right up here and you'll also see a little blue bar that goes further or closer to you to let you know how many car distance lengths you're maintaining behind the person in front of you now let's go over the entertainment screen so this is beautiful beautiful screen it's quite large um i have had some people say hey you know it's it seems like it's kind of obstructing my window view um actually if you do play close attention this is where your dash normally is and it should be quite level with this what genesis actually did is they dropped this area downwards okay and then they put the screen there so in reality when you position yourself to sit this screen should essentially line up with the hood of your car. So right about here. I don't know if you can see it on the video, but that's basically where it should be. Now, this is the home screen, okay? So you're gonna have a nice little picture over here. You're also gonna have your close by map. The way to control it, we have this scroll button right here. So if I actually take this wheel and scroll clockwise, it's going to move me one icon to the right so each little click moves me one icon to the right you can always swipe inside this but i find it a little bit easier to just take this wheel and just rotate it you can also click on any of the edge right left top bottom okay and you can always press the home button to go back home or click back to go to your, the previous screen that you were just on so let me show you what that looks like so we're on the home screen so I'm gonna use this dial and I'm gonna go clockwise. It's gonna be this way. That's counterclockwise. Clockwise, counterclockwise. Easy peasy, right? Okay, so I'm gonna rotate clockwise and it took me out of that, out of this whole screen. So one rotation clockwise or one click rather, and it takes me and it highlights map. So I'm gonna rotate it one more time. Now we're in nav. So you see the change there? I'm gonna go counterclockwise now we're on map, see how it's highlighted? Nav, Sirius, media, radio, phone, so on and so forth. So I'm gonna go back to the very first one, okay? And again, that was by rotating it counterclockwise to go this way. And when I am rotating it clockwise, we're gonna go to the right. So I'm gonna rotate it clockwise this time, okay? And you can actually go all the way to the next screen see so you can keep scrolling through them now let's say that we are on this very last screen but i want to jump to the previous screen so let's say i'm all the way in the last icon right now i'm in manual and i want to jump all the way to the previous screen to the beginning of it so right over here on this wheel i'm actually going to press right next to this arrow on the silver scrolling wheel so i'm going to press that See, and it took me all the way to the left. I'm gonna press it again, and it took me all the way here, and I'm gonna press it again, and it takes me to the home screen. And the same concept can be said for pressing it on the right side. So let's go ahead and do that. Press on the right, it took me here, and then, see, so you can scroll through them, or you can just press to go all the way from one screen to the next. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna look at is this little entertainment center, um, or the AC center, whatever you wanna call it. It's got a bunch of buttons so as you can see your map button is here nav custom button this is your hazards oh god i'm so pale radio media setup this button right here this is telling me that the air is coming from the inside because it's lit up now the air is from the outside now it's from the inside now this is your defroster. Obviously, we have a touchscreen over here. It's a little bit dirty. I haven't detailed the car for delivery. I just wanted to make a quick little video for you guys. Now, with the AC controls, of course, we have a dual AC, okay? So let's, uh, let's control where that air is going. So now it's going in all three fan directions, okay? Now, let's say I don't want it coming from, from the top over here then I deselected this top arrow. Let's say I also don't want it to go to my feet. Well, I can press that arrow again. Now it's only gonna come through these vents, okay? Now, the dual AC, we have the different temperature dial. So you see now we're set for 62. Your passenger can have their own AC as well. <clears throat> so let's say your passenger wants to be on 74 and you wanna be on 62, easy. 
But what if you want to bring them back to be the same temperature and you want this one to control both? So you see if I move this one, it's not doing anything on the other one. Well, you can always press sync. That's this button right here. And when it's highlighted in orange, it brings this one back to your driver temperature because the driver temperature is your master. Okay, so now when I rotate this, it's gonna do both of them together. Okay, now you can also adjust your fan speed. That's right here, okay. The one on the right obviously is more and this is less. Now, say your passenger doesn't want their AC to come out of the top vents and they only want it to go to their feet. Well, you can easily do that. So I deselected this one. See how it's highlighted? That means it's gonna come through here. Now I just took it off. So this is telling me that it's going to blow through this vent towards the driver, but not through this vent to the passenger. And the passenger is only gonna go through to their feet. Now you can actually increase the fan speed. Let's make sure my vents are open. Okay, so I can actually feel the AC going on right here and nothing coming through here. Beautiful. So let's lower that so it's not as loud. Now, I accidentally clicked on this, but let's go over that. This is your ventilated seat. Okay. Both passenger and driver have ventilated seats. See, you can easily tell because it's blue. So we're on the highest setting, medium, okay. low, off. Same thing here. Now we're on medium because there's three bars, low, and off. You also have your heated seats, which can easily be distinguished based on the color. So blue, it's telling me it's a ventilated seat. Let's do this one red. That means it's a heated seat. So we're on high, medium, low, off. High, medium, low, and off. You also have your heated steering wheel right over here. High, low, and off. Pretty easy. Now, if you ever want to turn your AC off, you can just shut it off right there. You can also press auto. So that's going to essentially blow into the car until we reach the desired temperature. So you can have your fan speed on low, medium, or high. Uh, I'm not a big fan of keeping it on auto. I prefer adjusting the fan speed myself, but everyone's a little bit different. So we have quite a few buttons here. Okay. Obviously, we have the map. Here's what it does. I'm going to click it. Pulls up the map. Easy. We also have nav. Let's click that. And this is what it brings up. Now, don't forget, this entire screen is touch screen, so it might make it a little bit easier if you don't like using the dial to rotate. So you have your destination. You can always go to search, address book, POI categories, that sort of thing. The POI categories, this is what it is. Gas station, parking, coffee, all the things that you might be searching for, so it might make it a little bit easier. So you need to go to a bank, POI, click it, then you click banks, and it's gonna show you all the banks in the proximity. So I'm just clicking the back button right over here. And let's go back to nav. You can also go to search. And of course you can also go to your address book. You can add your home address. So you would click right in the center here. This is uh, for all intents and purposes, let's call this enter, okay? So we're gonna press enter, add home, and then you can do a search. And then you can type in your address whatever you want it to be. You can use the wheel, you can just press on the screen or you can dictate. And once you do that, you can very easily set it as your home address. Okay, so next and very importantly, let's go over the setup of the car. This is gonna show you all the different features and I'm gonna do my best to explain through all of them and do it in a way that kind of makes sense. So the very first setting we have is vehicle. So I'm gonna press enter that's gonna take me into the screen, the driver assistance. So you could either press enter or again, you could press on the right side of the scroll wheel to take you from this screen to this screen. If I wanna go back to this one right here, I can press right over here. See, took me right there. I'm gonna press the right side, took me right over there. Easy. Now, every setting is actually going to tell you what it does. So I'm gonna press enter on this one and you have two different options to choose from from your smart cruise control you can have it based on your drive mode which basically if you were to put it on sport per se and you were on your cruise control the car knows hey we're on a sporty setting i need to accelerate a little bit quicker 
when I'm catching up to the person in front of me. However, I much prefer putting it on the based on driving style. Now, the reason is the car will actually learn to adapt to your driving style. So if it sees that you accelerate very aggressively when you're on cruise control, it'll do the same. Um, if the car notices that you're a bit more of a economical driver, you don't give the car too much gas, it'll uh, speed up a little bit slower. Uh, if it detects that you hit the brakes a little bit quicker or slower, it, it'll do all of that accordingly. You can check under the driving analysis what your style is set for. Keeping the closest distance to the car in front of us, have a very aggressive acceleration. So that means, you know, uh, give it a lot of gas. I wanna get up to speed as quickly as possible. And the reaction speed, that's if somebody cuts me off, how quickly is the car going to respond before it hits the brakes? So you can adjust it. Let's say you want it really quick. The moment somebody cuts me off, hit the brakes. Or really slow. Uh, let me get a little bit closer to them and uh, eventually react. So I think three is a happy medium. Um, I like keeping a bit of a closer distance, but maybe not one, maybe like a two or a three. Um, I do prefer a quicker acceleration. And I think the reaction speed on three is uh, it's a pretty good one right there. So let's go back. And again, I'm just clicking the button right over here. Let's go to our next setting, the driving convenience. Obviously I like to have all of these selected. Okay. So the highway driving assist, you see, tells you right over here exactly what the setting is doing. So this particularly says assist in driving in a highway according to the set speed and distance to the leading vehicle while keeping the vehicle centered in the lane. So what does that tell me? That's eh, a little confusing, but basically you put the cruise control while you're on the highway, the car knows, hey, the speed limit is, let's say 65. It'll set your cruise control to 65. The next one, the lane change assist. While you're on the highway, and you have your cruise control going, you can actually put your turn signal in. As long as there's nobody in your vicinity that you're gonna crash into them, you just put your turn signal on with your hands on the wheel and it's gonna help you merge to the next lane over. And then the last one is the auto speed change, okay? What does that do? Adjust it based on the navigation. So you have to have your GPS going, you have to be on the cruise control and it'll automatically set your speed based on the speed limit and if the speed limit changes, it'll reduce your cruise control speed. Next, warning timing. I like to keep that on normal. Uh, late lets you get a little bit too close to people. I'm not too big of a fan of that. Warning volume, I like to keep it on high. Let me show you the difference in sounds. This is low. It's kind of hard to hear, especially if you have the radio going. This is medium. Again, uh, once you have any sort of noise, I think it might drown it out. So I like to keep it on high. Much better. Your haptic warning. Let's turn that off for a moment to show you the difference. So when we put it on light, the haptic warning is your wheel vibrating at you when you do something that you're not supposed to. I put my phone on the dash. Right here is my wheel. I'm gonna put it right on the wheel facing the dash. I'm gonna put it on light and let's see how much the phone vibrates. Not much, but you can still hear it. Let's go medium. Okay, a little bit more. I like it on medium. I think strong is uh, a little bit too intense. Kind of feel the car shaking when you go on strong. But some people need that uh, strong vibration. Okay, so that was strong. Uh, as you can tell, it's much louder. Let's go back to medium. Eh, I think it's a little bit better. All right, let's go back over here, scroll down. Leading vehicle departure alert. This is a really cool one. So when you come to a full stop, and let's say you're at a stoplight and uh, you're not paying attention, I don't know, you dropped your phone, you're trying to pick it up, your kids are crying in the back, whatever it is, and you're not paying attention to the guy in front of you. Well, you're at a full stop, light turns green, the guy in front of you starts driving off. Well, you don't wanna get honked at from whoever's behind us. So the car's actually gonna go beep beep, and it's a kind of a quick succession of beeps like that, beep beep, to let you know that the person in front of you is starting to get away. You also have your inattentive driving warning. Again, this kind of tells you, hey, you've been driving for too long. Uh, you're driving a little uh, erratically. Maybe you should take a break. Next up, we have the forward safety. I highly, highly recommend you always keep this on. What this does is even if you're not using your adaptive cruise control and you get too close to the vehicle in front of you, the car will start making 
these very, very annoying beeps. It's gonna be like beep, 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 beep. And then if you still don't hit the brakes, the car's actually gonna slam on the brakes for you. Not comfortable, not very fun, but it does save lives. It's awesome, okay? Highly recommend you don't get into that predicament, but if you ever were to, at least you know that the car's gonna pre prevent you, or at the very least, minimize the, uh, the accident. So I think that's a really, really cool setting. So I always have that on forward cross traffic safety, and I have that on an active assist, okay? You can have it as a warning only, but the active assist is fantastic. I mean, let's say, God forbid, you had a seizure, you passed out at the wheel, whatever it is, and you're speeding and you're about to crash into the guy in front of you on the highway, and you know he's doing 65 and suddenly you're doing 90 because uh, you passed out at the wheel, and your car starts getting way too close to them, the car's gonna start beeping at you and eventually slam on the brakes to try to make you as safe as possible and hopefully avoid an accident. All right, next up we have the lane safety. I'm a big fan of this. This is the, uh, I like putting it on the assist. Um, the warning only, basically, here's how it works. I'm gonna take you right over here. See this little symbol right over here, this little car symbol? Okay, so when we're going 40 miles an hour or more, that little guy's gonna turn green. And that's how we know that your lane safety is working properly. So when you're going 40 miles an hour or more, this little light turned green, obviously you have to be on a road and it reads the paint markers of the road. That's gonna help balance you in the lane. Now you can have it as a warning only if you don't like it course correcting you. You can also turn it off. Um, I'm just a big fan of it, especially when it's late at night, it might be hard to see, uh, you're kind of swerving over the lane markers. I think it's a fantastic option to help balance you in the lane. Next up, we have our blind spot safety. Blind spot view, this is cool. What this does, let me show you. This is the advanced model of the 3.5. So this car is actually equipped with a 360 surround monitor view and there's actually cameras on the mirrors, both mirrors, front and back. And when you put your turn signal on. So let's say I want to put my left turn signal on. Look what happens. Shows me my blind spot on the left. And if I put it to the right, shows me my right side blind spot. Pretty neat. So I like to make sure that's enabled. I also have the safe exit assist. Let's say you have somebody in the back seat. You're pulled off on the side of the highway and people are just zooming by you. Well, you don't want, you know, your back passengers to just hop out of the car and get hit by another speeding vehicle. So this is going to prevent them from doing it. And I also make sure that I have my blind spot on active assist. That way, it actually tells you right here. here. Assist in collision avoidance by providing a warning and vehicle control when a risk of blind spot collision is detected. What that means is that it's not a passive blind spot like a lot of other vehicles. Not only, where is it? That little symbol right over there on my mirror. Okay, that's gonna turn orange when somebody's in my blind spot. Then when I put my turn signal on, the car's gonna beep at me. We already know that from a lot of other vehicles. However, with the GV80, if somebody's in a blind spot, the mirror turned orange, the car beeped at you because you put your turn signal on, and you still didn't pay attention and you still tried to merge into them, the car's gonna physically try to take you back into your lane to avoid an accident, which I think is phenomenal. Next up, we have our parking safety. I always make sure that we have our rear cross traffic. What that means is if you have your car in reverse and somebody comes across your backup camera from either direction, the car's gonna beep at you, okay? We also have our surround view monitor, which you put your car in reverse and you're gonna get the 360 view. Let me show you what it looks like. There you go. This is your backup camera. So if somebody were to come from this direction or from this direction, the car was gonna beep at us. And then we have our 360 surround monitor view. Let's go back into park. Okay. We have our parking distance warning. That's our parking sensors. Cars equipped with parking sensors all around. You get a little bit too close to something, the car's gonna start beeping at you. And next up, underneath the parking distance warning, I put it on rear active assist. And I think that's very important. Now, if you back up into something and you get a little bit too close and you can't really tell that something's behind you and the car's beeping, but you still think you have more space, once the car knows that it's gonna hit something, it'll actually stop for you. It's gonna save you a lot of money at the body shop. 
Okay, so those are the first settings of the driver assistance. Okay, so next up we have our drive mode. Let me show you what this does. The vehicle has an electronic suspension. So I like to enable coasting. As you can see right here, it says engine is decoupled from the transmission during vehicle coasting for better fuel economy and eco drive modes. Think about it as though your transmission goes into neutral and it just kind of lets you coast and it saves you a little bit more gas. Okay, drive mode change alert. I like to put on detailed. You're gonna get this big, nice notification all over the screen. Otherwise you have the simple alert, which just kind of pops up somewhere over here. So it tells you, you know, you're on comfort, you're on sport, whatever setting you're on, or you can have it off. Uh, I'm a big fan of the detailed alert. I think it looks kind of cool. And then we also have our custom drive settings. Now, since we do have an electronic suspension, when you go into sport mode, it's going to tighten up your steering, your suspension, and it's gonna give you a little bit more power out of the engine, okay? Some people don't like how tight the wheel and the suspension become. So you can do your custom drive mode. Let's say you want all the power out of the engine. So you can go to your powertrain, set it to sport, and make sure everything else right here stays on comfort. Now, vice versa. Let's say you don't need all the power out of your engine, but you like the feeling of the sportier suspension, the sportier feel in the car. Well, you can always put your engine on comfort or an eco let's say and then on your steering you can put on sport suspension on sport and your all-wheel drive you can also do it on sport so i think that's kind of a neat thing you get to customize a lot of features in the car and tailor the drive to you after that we also have our active sound design i find that most people want the car to be as quiet as possible you can always put it on soft normal strong etc uh, what that's going to do is it's going to play back through the speakers a little bit, some of the sound that the engine is producing. Heads up display. This is awesome. Okay, so first things first, I go into content selection and I make sure that everything is enabled. Now, if there's certain things that you don't like to be on your heads up display, for instance, let's say you don't care about the uh, radio information and you don't want that on the heads up display, you can always take it off. See, I just deselected it and let's put it back on. You also have your display control. I always recommend putting it as bright as possible and the height you're gonna adjust it based on your user height and the rotation. Now, as I move my view upwards or downwards, see how it's kind of, now it's tilting a little more to the right. Okay, so from here, it looks pretty level. And you see how it's starting to tilt a little bit? Yeah, it's a little goofy. So that, is what the rotation is for. So if you see that it's rotated a little bit, let's say this way, you can always rotate it so it looks more level based on your seating position. Our cluster service interval, I always recommend setting your interval. Typically we'd recommend about five, 6,000 miles. We are in Florida, so you might need a little bit more, a little bit less. So for all intents and purposes, six and six should do the trick content selection. I like to make sure everything's enabled, especially traffic signs. So when you're on the GPS um, or when you're driving in the road, you're actually gonna see your traffic signs pop up right on here. So you'll see the speed limit right on your dash. Welcome sound, that's just a nice little jingle. Okay, seat switch alert. I'm a big fan of these two. I make sure that I select both of them. Okay, so the seat switch alert. Like I was saying, I love these two features. And let me show you exactly why. I'm gonna open the door and right here, we have our buttons to move our chair all around. So uh, very quickly, this tightens up the side bolsters. This makes them a little looser. You can adjust the incline of your chair. See, forward, backwards, okay. And that's this right here, forward, backwards. This actually moves your seat forward. This moves your seat backwards. And this is for the little leg extension. If you're a taller driver or you just want to take some pressure off your legs during a long drive now why do i like those features these are actually touch sensitive so let me show you exactly what i mean by that so i'm not going to move the chair but i'm just going to touch one of the buttons i'm just touching a bunch of different buttons so right now without even moving my chair it's telling me hey this is the button that's going to move you forward or backwards this is the button that's going to change your uh recline and incline and this is for your lumbar and you can also do 
the side bolsters. Now, this little button, where is it? It's kind of hard to see, but that top little button between these two, okay? If I put my finger on it, that's for your massage chair. So if you press it once, pelvic, that's just doing the uh, seat part of the chair, the bottom. If you press it a second time, it does your back. Press it a third time, it does a full body massage. And of course you can turn it off. Okay, next up, we have our lights, the ambient lights. It was beautiful. So there's actually an LED strip all in there on the sides of the doors, of course, in the back. We have it right in here too. It's also gonna change the color inside the dial and right here under the center console, there's some more lighting. So your brightness, you can adjust that of course, you can have it completely off. I like to have it all the way up because I think it's kind of fun. And the color, you can choose whichever color you want. You can also do custom color. When you go to set custom color, you can move it anywhere through the wheel so let's say we like this uh, pinkish kind of color. We'll press OK, and there you go. That's our custom color now. My personal favorite for the GV80 has got to be the Garnet Red. I think it is the brightest, the most saturated color that they have. Now, different vehicles for us have different colors that I think kind of pop a little bit more, but for this purpose, I like the Garnet Red. After that, we also have the one-touch turn signal. So. With the one touch turn signal, if you lightly lower your turn signal, I have it set for five flashes. So I'm gonna lightly lower it, three, four, and five. And then it turns off. You can have it set for three, five, seven, or turn it off if you don't like it. Now to me, three is a little bit too quick to merge lane. Seven is a little bit too long. I find five the nice, perfect little sweet spot. Now we're on door and lift gate. Okay, so I like the car to automatically lock when we shift gears. Now you can also change that on speed. So the moment you get up to speed, it's gonna lock the car. Otherwise, the moment you shift, it's gonna lock the car. Unlock, you can do it when the vehicle's off, when you shift to park, or whenever you just open the door. You also have the two press to unlock feature. Let me explain that. Um, I've had quite a few questions on that. So this is the key for the vehicle. If I were to press the unlock button once, Okay, and this is deselected. So if I press unlock once, it'll open the entire car. The moment I select this, if I press unlock, it only unlocks the driver door, and then I have to press unlock a second time to open the remaining doors. It's great for safety, especially if you don't know the area that you're parked in, uh, you might not feel too safe and comfortable. You can always have it on a two press to unlock, and it'll help make you feel a little bit safer so nobody's gonna jump in your car. But if you know exactly where you're going, you're always parking at home, safe areas, eh, I don't love having it on. I'd rather just press the button once and the entire car unlocks. Next up, we have our power liftgate opening speed. You can actually control how fast your trunk opens, which I think is just so funny. I like to put on fast. I don't want to wait for my trunk to open. You can also have a designated height that your trunk is going to open to. So you can do it based on your height, which you can pre-program. Very little open, medium, most of the way, and all of the way. So this is great, especially if you're a little bit on the shorter side and you can't reach the button all the way in the top of the trunk. So you don't want it to open all the way. Or let's say uh, opening the trunk the full way is going to hit the top of your garage or something like that. Then you can always adjust it under your settings. You also have your smart lift gate option. The way this works, you have to be out of your car, you lock the car and you leave the proximity of the vehicle for a certain amount of time. I think it's about 20 or 30 seconds. By the time you walk back to your vehicle with the keys in your pocket, so let's say you just went to do uh, groceries, you stand behind your trunk. The trunk will flash about three times and then the trunk will pop open. Now, typically I recommend keeping this feature off until you know that you need to use it. Why? Well, for the most part, we come up to our car from the back. So if you're not the fastest of walkers, by the time you walk from your trunk to the front, eh, chances are your trunk is gonna pop open. So not the most fun thing to go through, um, but it is a very, very handy feature, especially when your hands are full of groceries, you're hauling some, I don't know, if you're like me and you like to go to Home Depot and buy a bunch of lumbar and build things, then 
you don't have to stand behind your car and start fidgeting with buttons and taking the remote out of your pocket and that whole thing. So you can always enable this smart liftgate option when you know you're going to be using it. But for all intents and purposes, I do recommend keeping it off. Okay, then we have our digital key. Um, you can use your smartphone. I think it's only compatible with Androids at this point. They might be releasing an update for Apple in the near future, which I do hope so. Um, you can also get these card keys that kind of look like this. You can order them from Genesis and you can use that to drive your car. Otherwise, you can just use your phone instead of a key and you would put it where the smart charger um, wireless charging station is, which is actually right down there. Okay. We have our convenience rear occupant alert. Now, if you're not driving around with people in the back all too often, I do recommend turning this off. Uh, basically what it's gonna do is it's just gonna beep at you and let you know when you shut the car off, hey, make sure you check your back seat. Uh, please don't forget your small child or animal in the back. Welcome light. I always make sure that I have both of these features enabled. So when you unlock the door and also when you approach a vehicle, you know, that way you know that it's your car. Wireless charging, obviously I like keeping that on. I mean, who doesn't like wireless charging? I also make sure that I turn the rear wiper in reverse automatically on. So when you're going in reverse, the car detects that it's raining, it'll automatically put the rear wiper on. And now we're back to the vehicle auto shut off. You can prevent the car from shutting off if you leave the vehicle with the keys. So say you kept the keys in your pocket, you left the car, and the car is just gonna keep running if you turn it off. Now, I don't know how many people like to leave their car running for prolonged periods of times. Uh, personally, if I leave my car on, it's because I forgot. So 30 minutes, I think is a pretty good happy medium there. So if you leave the car, you forgot to turn it off, 30 minutes later, the car will actually turn itself off. And reset, don't press this one because you've set your car up really nicely so far. So don't reset it, that's not fun. Okay, next up is our navigation. You can go to your display menu, hit the map, map color. Let me show you the difference actually. This is the normal color. Uh, it's a little bit hard to tell on camera, but it's just a very bright white. Let's go to setup, display, and map, and map color. I like to switch it to the latte color. Let me show you what it looks like now almost like it's got like a blue light filter. So it makes it a little bit uh, warmer, a little bit more orange. It's less of an eye strain at night. Okay. Now, if you wear glasses, it's hard for you to see, something of that sort. Map font size can actually make it large or extra large. This is normal, large, extra large. Obviously it's not gonna be the size of these huge letters over here, but you can adjust it to suit your needs. Okay, POI display. So when you're driving around and let's say you're constantly looking for parking, well, you can enable parking. So it'll tell you that there's parking in the vicinity. Let's go back, information. I like to make sure that my map tells me my vehicle speed. Um, it just makes it very convenient. So right up here, when you have the map on, it'll tell you exactly how fast you're going. It's pretty easy to just glance on over to your map, especially when you're seeing where you're driving around, and to tell your speed right away. Plus, if somebody's driving with you, they can tell you, hey, careful, you're speeding. Okay, next up, time to return to the map after I go for 20 seconds. So let's say you're actually using your GPS, and then you clicked on the radio and you wanna start switching channels, and then you don't wanna fumble around with all the buttons while you're driving, because that's not very safe. 20 seconds later, it'll take you automatically back to your map. And I also like to automatically recenter the map in case I move the map around. It'll take me back to where my vehicle is and where I'm supposed to be going. All right. Other, show previous destination. This is one setting I like to turn off. Show previous destination after navigation startup. The reason I like to turn this off Let's say uh, you were in the middle of nowhere and you told the car to take you home. You drove home, turned the car off, and the next morning you wanna start driving to work. If this setting's enabled, well, the car's gonna keep trying to route you back home. So I do find that kind of annoying. That's honestly my biggest complaint about the vehicle, eh, but to each their own. 
So I like to take that feature off. You can always turn it on if you like it for whatever reason. Next up we have our sound. Premium sound, I find that on stage sounds the best. It really splits the audio beautifully all over the speakers in the car. There's 21 speakers in this vehicle. Um, it does a great job of distributing the audio so you have a real surround experience. Position, you can choose exactly where you want all the volume to come from. If you want it more from the front, the back, the sides, whatever works for you. Sound tuning, uh oh, somebody messed with this. Center. So you can adjust your treble, mid range, bass. And if you just want to center it, so let's say we did heavy bass, and I don't like that anymore, click on center. Guidance. I pretty much make sure all of these are selected, okay? Driving safety priority, of course. I'd rather be safe than hear my songs on the radio. Parking safety, of course. I'd rather not hit something than hear my favorite song. Navigation during calls. I cannot tell you the amount of times that I get lost when I have my GPS going and it will not play on my vehicle during a call. So definitely put that on. Navigation volume priority, of course, if you're listening to the radio, um, when you're using the GPS, it'll actually lower the volume of the radio and you'll hear the GPS a little bit more clearly. Now you can also mute the nav guidance. Uh, I don't know why you would wanna do that, but some people just don't like to hear it. They just like seeing the map, so that's always an option. Scroll up to the top, you see navigation volume. Okay, so you can use the map screen volume buttons, which will be somewhere over here when you're doing the map. Or you could do the map volume buttons or the volume controller. That means that when you're on the map, if you use this little scroll wheel right here to go up and down in volume or on your wheel to go up and down in volume, it'll adjust the volume of the GPS. Now, I like my GPS to be a set volume, so that's why I don't put that one on. Um, sometimes I might wanna lower the radio, but I'm on the map, and then it just gets a little frustrating. Okay, oops. So we do the position, the sound tune, the guidance. You can also go to different media volumes. See, you can have different volumes for AM, FM, Sirius, and all of that. Your subsystem volumes, make your beeping louder, less loud. Ringtones, eh, there's a lot of different options here. This is where you could actually make your nav guidance a little bit louder. I think guidance it's... will be at this volume. Perfect. Okay, you can also have your Android Auto volume higher or lower, your Apple CarPlay higher or lower, speed dependent volume control. I keep it a normal, so as you speed up, it very lightly raises the sound of the music that you're listening to to kind of compensate for uh, the ambient noise that's happening. Although there's not too much in this vehicle, it's a very quiet car. And I also make sure I put the start up max volume limit. So let's say you're having a great time, you're partying in your car, you're blasting the radio, you turn the car off, and then tomorrow you get back in the car, turn the radio back on, well, now it's not gonna blow your eardrums out. It's gonna go to a factory maximum. So that's kind of cool. The sound design, this is to make the engine play through the speakers. We already went over that. Um, I like to keep it off. I like a pretty quiet ride. Radio noise control. Um, I do a minimum noise reduction. Um, the original, it's not bad either. Um, the minimum noise reduction is if there's a little bit of interference with the radio waves, it's going to essentially cut back on that. When you go to maximum noise reduction, the sound sounds a little soft. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the way that that sounds. All right. Now, we have our device connections. This is where you would enable your Bluetooth. So device connections, obviously you wanna make sure that Android and Apple CarPlay are both enabled. Click Bluetooth, Bluetooth connection. So we already had a couple of demos, but if you wanna add another, you just click add. If you wanna delete, I don't know who that is, let's say, or one of my friends uh, paired their phone to my radio and I wanna take them off. I pressed this button going down. See, I'm pressing it up. I'm back to Caroline's, pressing down, scroll to the right, delete, and let's delete both of these. There we go, delete, yes. Cool. Now, when you have multiple phones connected, you can also choose who your primary connection is. So let's say um, you have cell phone one and cell phone two, whoever it might be, 
uh, you have your work phone and your personal phone and you want your work phone to be the priority, well, you can change the connection priority over here to decide which phone or which person's phone is gonna be the one that automatically connects when you get into the car. Okay, let's go back. You can also make different profiles, kinda cool. So if you have multiple drivers, you can say, uh, Joe, driver one, Jane, driver two. And you can actually have different settings for every person. After that, voice recognition. I put it on beginner, make it a little bit easier. Display, illumination, you get to decide if you want it to be automatic. So at night, it'll make the map just like a dark black uh, with just the roads and your vehicle highlighted. You can also link it to your cluster. I'm gonna press downwards. Link to cluster, I like that. So when this is brighter, this is brighter. If I make this less bright, it'll also make this less bright. That way I don't have to individually go into this screen and start messing with it. Blue light filter, that's another cool one. Uh, some people like it, some people don't. Um, basically what it does is it filters some of the blue light out and it gives you less eye strain, especially late at night. It turns the screen a little bit more orange. Screensaver, I'm a big fan of clock number two. This is what the digital looks like. Analog one, analog two, analog three. So I like number two, that's the one I usually set it for. Okay, home screen layout, you can reorder your home icons. You can choose what comes up on your split screen. So let's say you don't like that it shows you the weather. Well, you can take it off from there. You can also choose your font size. So let's go extra large, large and standard. Just to give you a quick rundown. So this is standard, this is large. Back to standard, back to extra large. I make it easier if you have some trouble seeing. You can also choose your different wallpapers. It might be a little bit difficult to see. Okay, now we're on to the button slash touchpad. Custom button by the radio. It's gonna be this bad boy right over here. Okay, it's a little start. So you can have it do a variety of different things. Home, passenger talk, quiet mode, display on and off. Uh, there's a million things. I like to set it to phone projection. Why? Well, because when you plug your phone in and you wanna use, let's say your Apple CarPlay, um, there is no button that takes you directly into your CarPlay otherwise, at least not that I've found so far. So I find it a little bit easier to have it on phone projection. You also have another custom button by your steering wheel. That's going to be this one right here. You can have it reject or end the call. You can change your hands-free devices. That's a very useful one. Privacy mode. Uh, let's say you have somebody in the car and you don't want them to know the person's name that is calling you uh, for business purposes or whatever, um, you can always press the star button and it'll take you right into privacy mode. So only the phone number will pop up and it won't say their name. But the one I like is passenger talk. Well, the reason is, say you have people in the back seat, you wanna talk to them, you don't wanna turn around and start shouting, you just press the star button and it plays your voice over the intercom. We have our mode button on the steering wheel, that's this one. Not to be confused with this one. This is your cruise control. This is your media modes. So you can have it cycle through your Bluetooth, FM, AM, Sirius, USB music, USB video, phone projection, sounds of nature, all of that. Now, let's say you never listen to AM radio. Cool. You could just take it right off. So now when you click the mode button, it'll go through all of the other options here, except for AM. Let's say you don't like to listen to Bluetooth audio as well, you can take that off. Or you might only listen to Sirius, let's say. So let's say we only listen to Sirius and FM. Great, now when you click the mode, it'll take you between FM and Sirius. So you can customize this to suit whatever taste and music and audio you have. There's no real reason to mess with this one, the home touch button, pad settings, the haptic feedback. So that's the enter button. You can have it vibrate a little bit stronger, a little bit less strong. Um, medium's good enough. Um, no real reason to touch this either. Connected services, you can always check that you are enrolled in connected services, that your modem 
is connected, that your modem's up to date, all of that. General, again, just very general things, date and time, language, what keyboard you wanna be using, all of that. And look at that, we're back to vehicle. Okay, so this is how you control your wipers. Now, notice, I'm gonna lower it one. See, it tells me right on my dash what setting we're on. We're on auto. And you see this little arrow right here? So you can make it quicker, slower, right? And it actually shows you right here what setting you're on. So you can adjust it to suit your needs. Um, this vehicle does have rain sensing wipers. You can also go to low, high, and all the way off. Now, if you just need one wipe, you can just move this upwards. There you go. And if you wanna spray on the windshield, you just pull towards you. So it's gonna look like this. And there we go. Now, on the left-hand side, we have our turn signal. Um, there we go, can we get it? Now we're on off, auto, lights, and more lights. So let's go to auto. Now, if you wanna use your high beams, again, if you pull this towards you, you gotta hold it. And you see that symbol right there? That's telling me my high beams are on. The moment I let go, they're off. See that? Auto, so I'm auto high beams. And what that's gonna do is, let's say I'm on, a, I'm on a country road and there's nobody by me and there's no light sources around, my high beams are automatically gonna go up. Now, another car starts driving my way, my car detects their lights, It'll shut down my high beams until they pass so I don't blind them, and it'll put them back on. If I move that forward again, it turns it off. Now, if it is later at night and it's a little bit darker, as you can see, it's it's overcast, but it's not dark. If it is dark, when you push it forward the first time, you'll be in auto. You push it forward the second time, it'll just keep your high beams on. But it has to be dark out. So in this situation, it just puts them on automatic or off. Okay. Here's our steering wheel. Here are some buttons. See right here to the left of the wheel. This adjusts the brightness of the screen. So see I'm making it less bright or maximum. Now, see this button? A off. When you come to a full stop while you're driving, as long as you're not in sport mode, of course, the engine will actually turn off. And the moment you start letting go of the brakes, the engine will turn right back on and give you that immediate engine response. It does save you a lot of gas at the end of the day, but some people really don't like that feature, especially down here in Florida where it does get hot. Um, so some people don't like the engine to turn off because again, your AC is not gonna blow as cold. So you can always press that button. And as long as the light is on here, it's going to prevent your engine from turning off while you're driving. The next button over, that's this one. See? This little car symbol, that's your lane keeping assist. So if I were to press this, have a look, now it's off. Now I don't have lane keeping assist enabled. Now it's back on. And the next one over is your traction control. So probably not gonna wanna press that one, okay? Right down here, this is your trunk. So you can press and hold and it opens the trunk. Once the trunk's open, you can press and hold and it will actually close the trunk as well. Pretty neat. This button right here, the infamous parking brake. Remember back in the day, we had handbrakes, pull it up, that puts your handbrake on. You have to press the button and push it downwards and it releases the parking brake. Very similar concept. If we pull this, take a look at my dash. Right up top, see how it says in red brake? That means my electronic parking brake is on. So the easiest way to take it off my foot on the brakes and this P symbol. On the left side of it, let me zoom in so you can see a little better. On the left side of it, right here on the corner, I'm going to press. It goes on an angle. And look at that, it's not on the dash. So I'm gonna put it back on. There it is. And I'm gonna push it again, it's off. So again, to take it off, foot on the brakes, very important, foot on the brakes. Put your finger here on the left side of it and push on an angle and that'll take it off. Okay, so this is how you go between gears. Reverse, neutral, drive, park. We already are familiar with this. You can always tell exactly where you are. P for park. Here. Now we're on drive. 
Now we're on reverse. Now we're on neutral. Now we're back to drive. And now we're on park. Now, if you ever forget to press the park button, you could just turn the car off when you're at a full stop. And it'll actually put you into park. Kind of cool. All right, so that's our gear changes. And over here to the right of that, this is your parking sensors. Make sure that it's lit up. That way, when you get too close to something, the car's gonna beep at you. This is your hill start slash hill descent assist. So when you're going up or down a hill, you're not gonna be rolling all over the place. You can also lock your all wheel drive on here. This is your camera button and this is your drive modes. So take a look. I'm gonna rotate this dial to the right. That's the detailed alert. Now we're on sport, custom, I'm going to the left. Now we're on snow, eco, now we're back to comfort. So you can adjust your different drive modes that way. Now, your camera button, if you press it, this is what pops up. Now, once you're already familiar with how all of this works, I'm gonna take it back off and back on so you can read the little warning it gives you. It says, press the button to display the camera view or press and hold to activate the parking assist. Let's put that back on to activate the parking assist system. Now you can always go to, oops, can see it says close. You can scroll down to don't show again, but I'm just gonna close it for now. Now, this is what it looks like when we put our camera on, okay? So we see our 360 camera view all around here. I'll show you how that works too, it's kinda cool. I'm gonna open the window and you're actually gonna see my hand. I'm gonna reach by, see, hello. The way it works is it takes the images from both sides of the mirrors, the front and the back, and it stitches them together to give you this kind of bird's eye view. Our car is not white, our car is actually black, but it just does a computer rendition. Now, if you look on the left screen, that's our rear view camera. How do I know it's a rear view? See the symbol right here? It's lit up on the back of it. That's telling me it's the reverse camera. If I switch it into drive, that's my front facing camera, okay? You can see right here, the front of the car is lit up. So that's my front camera. Now the back of the car is lit up, so it's my backup camera. Let's go back to park. And into the camera settings, close this one. Now this is a really cool one, but mostly just for entertainment. You click this one right here. It gives you a view all around your car, which you can actually spin around. It's kind of useful in traffic. If you see a little spot by you and you're like, ah, I kind of want to squeeze in there, or you're parking in a really tight spot, you don't know if you can fit, you can see all around your vehicle, move it around. Plus, it's kind of cool to show other people and just play with sometimes. All right, so that's that. Now, if I wanted the car to park for me, we can do that. We can also have the car pull out of a spot. So let me show you how we're gonna do all of that. Okay, so with the park button right here, or rather the camera button, I have to make sure that my seatbelt is on, my hands are off the wheel, my foot's off the brakes, and here's what I'll do. You press and hold this button. Safe exit direction. Must be stopped to select exit direction. Now, it's not gonna let me go to my left, because clearly right here you can see there's a bunch of bushes. I can click to the right. So let's click that one, okay? Here's what happens to my dash. Shows me my blind spot, puts my turn signal, and this is what it tells me to do. Take hands off of steering wheel. Press and hold the parking button. So, this is what it looks like. I'm gonna press and hold right on here. And look at my wheel. And I'm not touching the brakes, I'm not touching the wheel. I'm just holding the parking button, or the camera button rather. And you see, it took me right out of the spot. So when you're parallel parked and it's a little bit hard to get in and out of the spot, you can always have the car help you out with that. So that's a neat little feature. Now, when you do want the car to pull out of the spot for you, you have to make sure that you had just gotten into the vehicle, you turned the vehicle on, and you didn't drive it yet. The moment you start driving, it's gonna look for a new parking spot for you, okay? If you wanted to leave the parking spot and it's not giving you the option to leave the parking spot, simply turn the car off 
open your door, close your door. And that might not even be necessary. I think you might just be able to turn the car off, back on, and press and hold this button right over here, and it'll help you pull out of your spot. Now, there's quite a few controls right up here. It's a little bit difficult to see. This button turns on all the lights in the entire car. And let's press that again. This is your Genesis Connected Services. You can also kind of use that as a roadside assistance. When you click this button and the light is on, that's telling me that when I open the door, the lights will actually turn on. This is my SOS button if I'm ever stuck. It's an emergency and it'll call whoever just to come and rescue me. That's kind of neat. Now, right up here, you see this little guy? It's not even a button, it's just like a touch and it turns the light on. Same thing on this side. Now, this is for my sunroof. If I do a, it's a two stage really. Um, so if you lightly push it back and it only clicks once, it's gonna open the shades. Once the shades are open, if I do that same touch again, then it'll open the glass. If I wanted to just open the glass all the way since the first time, I just pull it all the way back and let go. So this is what a one touch looks like. And I'm gonna do a second one touch. Okay, now, if I wanna close the shades and the sunroof, I'm gonna take this button and push it all the way in. And here's what happens. Easy. Now, on the left-hand side of the driver's door, there's quite a bunch of buttons. So in order to set your seat memory position, you would press set, and then you would press one, assuming you're driver one. If you want to set it for the second position, you would just, again, press set, two. And then it doesn't matter where you move your chair, you just click the position that you are set for, okay? Now, to adjust your mirrors, see how it's lit up on the right button? That's telling me that I am controlling the right mirror. See, so I'm moving it. Now, if I press the left button, it's telling me I'm gonna control this mirror. So I'm moving that right now. All right, now, let me show you something interesting. I'm gonna put the car in reverse. See how the beer's tilted down? Yeah, some people don't like that. Back to park. The way to disable that, see how one of these two buttons is lit up? I just press that button again so it's not lit up. And I'm gonna put the car in reverse now. See how the mirror didn't move anywhere? That's how you can disable the mirrors from pointing downwards when you go in reverse. So if that's a feature that annoys you, make sure that none of these are lit up. Now, another cool feature right in here inside this little wheel that adjusts the angle of your mirrors. If you press this button, here's what it does. There you go, mirrors folded in, mirrors folded out. And they'll automatically do so when you lock the car and unlock the car. Um, when the car is locked and you approach the car with the proximity uh, of the keys inside, or the keys with you and you approach the car, uh, the mirrors will actually open up to let you know, hey, this is your car. Okay, this unlocks the car, this locks the car. These are windows, pretty self-explanatory. This is your child lock and window lock. So if you press this, People on the back can't leave the car. So that's kind of cool, especially if you have little kids. Um, it's a great safety measure. But for all intents and purposes, if you just have your friends in the back and for some reason they're locked in, well, just make sure that this is not lit up in orange. If it is, simply click it and it unlocks them. Okay, so a couple other interesting features. The chairs actually have some buttons on them. Well, your passenger chair. You can actually move your chair or their chair forward, backwards, you can adjust the recline. So let's say you have to bring some packages or something and it won't all fit in the back seat. Well, you can move the chair from here instead of reaching all the way over here, trying to move their chair all around, okay? Now to open your little glove box center armrest, there's actually a button right here. See, so it's right here, very intuitive. Just where you would put your hand, click. And this whole unit opens up can actually reach a little bit in here. This is with my fingers extended. I'm gonna make a fist. That's how far deep it lets me go. 
we also have some AC controls in the back. So your passengers can actually adjust the fan speed. They can adjust their temperature. You can have auto. You can also have your heated chairs, high, medium, low, off. And they can adjust where the air is going to, or they can just completely turn their air off. Besides that, right over here, quick chargers, USB chargers for your phones. And this one, my absolute favorite. Check this out. It's a full wall socket. You can plug an appliance in here. <laughs> if you wanted to bring like a blow dryer or cook a pot of chili in the back, well, you could probably do so. Now, your mirror was also redesigned for the new generation of Genesis. Garage clickers are actually right over here on the bottom of the mirror. So to set your garage up, all you would do is you would hold this button and you see how it's blinking orange? So you would hold your garage clicker or press it on your garage door opener. You wanna make sure that you're holding that while you're holding this. And eventually this little orange light it's gonna actually turn green and it's gonna flash quickly. That's how you know that it's paired. Okay, and lastly, your GV80 quick reference guide. This thing is awesome. Pay attention to this one. It's got pictures. Yeah, this thing's awesome. So any questions you might have about your car, don't really know how to do, well, here you go. It shows you with pictures.